hey, welcome everyone uh, in Facebook land and um, here on the Zoom. Um, great to see smiling faces there in Zambia. And, um, really, uh, appreciative. We've got Mass and Marks uh, with us today. Um, I'm going to speak about uh, innovation or <laughs> value proposition, but she comes from a place of being an innovative entrepreneur, um, serving overseas, coming back to the U.S., um, leading a startup club right here in D.C. So uh, she comes with just a wealth of experience taking on um, pivots, being able to uh, allow you to see how you can grow your business. So with that, Madison, over to you, and thanks, thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. How are you? It's good. I'd love to start off by uh, doing, I think we have enough time to do some introductions. Can you tell me your name? Nice to meet you. Hello. Great. What are your names? I'm Josephine Yanda. Nice to meet you, Josephine. Thank you. What about you in the pink jacket? <laughs> Hello. My name is Doris Manga. Hi, Doris. Nice to meet you. And I see some other faces in the back. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> My name is Elisa Goma. Nice to meet you. And then... I couldn't hear you. Oh, nice to meet you. And then I see two more. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Nice. Awesome. Well, you look, you all look awake and ready to go. So how are you feeling today? Good. Awesome. Okay. Well, my name is Madison, and I am very happy to be talking to you today. Um, once upon a time, about a year ago, I was not living as far as I am away from, uh, from Zambia. I was living in the Middle East, so I was a little bit closer. So my background has been working in places like Lebanon, Jordan, and then the United Arab Emirates to help social entrepreneurs like yourselves across the globe. Um, so today I wanna to have a conversation around what we call your value proposition or what value you bring to your customers um, and, and how you really go about trying to understand the value that you bring um, by actually talking to your customers. This is a process we call customer discovery. So it's actually, getting out of, uh, out of your office or, um, or talking to people that you are selling to or want to sell to about their needs and trying to understand everything about them from their habits in the day to their buying preferences to um, their pain points. So what are the challenges that they face? So let's say that you're selling a product like clothing Right. So why do people keep coming back to you? what, why would people want to keep coming back to you uh, to buy a product versus your neighbor or someone else? So how do you be more competitive by bringing value to your customers? That's what we want to talk about today. What type of businesses are you working on? Are, are they, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your, your businesses just briefly. Are, are they in the fashion space, selling products? Yeah, 
second hand clothes. Second hand clothing or second hand goods products in clothes. general. Okay. So when you go to your customers, how are you selling alongside many other people where people have to come and they have to decide why they want to buy from you? So Okay. Um, go ahead. Second hand children clothes. Okay, so clothes. And then when they're selling them, are they selling it in a market or are they selling by themselves? Are they are they selling alongside many other people? It's a little bit difficult to hear. She has a small store in the okay. market. Okay. So in this in the store, how do people decide that they want to buy from you? So what her strategy is is um she sells uh, she from the second hand clothes she put my blonde ones oh my god Okay, so what she does is um, the, the second-hand clothes are in different grades. So she goes for the higher grade, which is a bit pricey. And uh, in most cases, it's, um, it's, it has uh, quality stuff as compared to the cheaper um, uh, bags of second-hand clothes. So that's what her strategy is. So people will follow the quality in, in, at her store to buy that. Okay, great. So that's a very good example of your value proposition, right? So you bring higher quality clothing. So stuff that is made out of better material to attract certain buyers to come to come to your store and then maybe to keep coming back to your store because they know that you will be providing that, that higher quality product. Uh, can you guys hear me? Adam, can you hear me or? Yeah, I, I think they might have froze, so we'll give them a second. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is good stuff. You can tell um, that you know they're in the market. Um, I think I, I can tell where you're going is is a lot of times you have competition, right? And how you stand out. But Shim looks like. I'm sorry, someone can read. We had lost um, connectivity. It happens, no worries, we'll keep going. Um, so with customer discovery, I'm gonna share some slides, but they may or may not make sense. I'm going to break it down to make it accessible for you in your job. So how you can better understand your customers and how you can better increase the value that you bring to your current customers and potentially getting new customers because I am sure that you have liked a product or you've met someone who was selling something and you believed in that product. And then what did you do? You, you go and you tell someone else about it. So you want to create that, side, that kind of impact with your own products, whether it be you're selling clothes or food or technology, you want to create 
something that makes customers feel like they have a connection to the value that you're bringing. So to the clothes that you're providing, you want to keep them coming back. You want to keep understanding what their needs are. And then to the best of your ability, responding so that you're able to meet the needs that they have. So business is often, uh, we talk about um, business, you know, is, is you're selling a product or a service, but really you're bringing a value to a customer. A customer is coming to you because they need clothes. Maybe they need to buy a dress for a wedding. Maybe they want to buy a new a pair of uh, shoes or something for their child when they're going to school. So there is some sort of identity that people feel with what they wear, right? So why did you choose to put on that really pretty shirt with the umbrella on it right now? <laughs> okay, it's, she 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 said that she loves it and it goes with the way that she sees it. Can you repeat one more time? Sorry, I'm saying she says she likes the um, what she's wearing, and on top of that, it's because it's warm because it's a bit cold today. Exactly right. So the value of your product that you're wearing is that it's warm and you like it, right? So. And hopefully you're wearing it because there it's not raining. And so the only time you have to wear an umbrella is on you, not carrying one. <laughs> so, um, so the value we create with the product and the experience is what you want to leave people with. So when people walk in your store, what makes them feel special? Is it you greeting them at the door and saying, hello, can I help you find something? Or do you have, uh, you know, do you, you create an environment where they feel welcome? Do you provide them water? Or do you, um, do you have a mirror there so that they can try things on? Um, so it's not just about the product itself, but it's about the experience that the customer has when they're coming into your store. So what would make them want to keep coming in is because they know, oh, you know, if I go into your store, I'm going to be able to see these clothes. Maybe I'll be able to try them on. Maybe I'll be able to, um, maybe you have a return policy within 24 hours. I can go try it on and bring it back. And I know that you will take it back, you know? So there are ways that you can understand your customers, some of the pain points, maybe because of COVID, you customers are not trying things on, they, they're going home with the products. Um, they just come in and buy it and leave. But maybe you can create a new experience that makes customers say, oh, I feel really welcome when I come into this store. Um, it, it, is the market an open market or is it a closed space? Um, where like, for example, you sell only to women. So she, she stocks all kinds of clothes for both um, men and women. Yes, it's an open market. Uh, there should be a more than... Um, like a mall? Uh, no, 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 not like a mall. It's uh, just a market. It's, um, it's an open market with uh, more than 3,000 um, stands or whether you want to call them makeshift stores. Um, yeah, more than 3,000. So maybe, are you selling the same? You're selling different, um, you know, different clothes than the people next to you, right? So maybe when you, when you have customers, do you ask them why they stopped by your store or they decided to buy your product? Yeah. 
Can you, sorry, can you speak? I think it's just slightly higher and then it the volume goes. Oh. Okay, I'm saying her neighbors sell jackets, for example. And then the other neighbor on the other side sells sportswear. Okay, gotcha. So it, it just depends on where you're at. So can you tell me, you know, do you have customers that come back to you over and over again? So she's saying yes, she has a number of repeated customers. Okay, great. Do you understand what these customers want or the problems they're experiencing with finding good products? Have you ever asked them? Okay, she she says according to what she thinks is that most people follow her as a store because of the, the, the because of the quality of clothes that she sells. Great. So that's. <laughs> So it sounds like because of the quality of the clothes, people keep coming back to you. But can you actually tell what types of clothes people are looking for? Or do you have an idea of, you know, what fabrics or what types of um, materials that your customers would want to see? So as you're selling, let's say you're selling jackets with a very high quality and maybe you have 10 customers who buy that, but then you run out. Will they keep coming back to you if you don't have the same product? So it, it's the idea of customer discovery is about understanding your customer, their preferences, their behaviors, what they buy, what they do. And you can start doing that as a business owner in your own sales practice. So you can talk to your, you can come up with a few questions to help you understand the customer better. Okay. So, you know, asking them, um, how, you know, how often do you buy pieces like this? How is your experience finding my store? Maybe one of the problems that customers experience is that there's so many markets that they don't know where your store is. <laughs> and uh, maybe you can provide a map with like an, an X in the market where your store is or a business card, so, you know, or maybe, you know, you can provide some services. So if they're looking for a product, um, let's say I'm, I'm, they're going to, uh, a, they're going to a party and they need a jacket or it's cold and they want a jacket and they are looking for a red jacket, right? So they, they specifically want a very red jacket. And so you say, okay, if I find one, I'll let you know. Um, but do you have, you know, a, a list of who your customers are, what they like, what they buy, when they buy, and their feedback? This is, you know, the next step in business is really understanding who your customers are so you can better create that owner, you know, as the business owner, that owner customer relationship where they feel like it's not just about a transaction, it's not just about buying clothes, but that you really care. And so because you care, you're going to set yourself apart from all of the other vendors. So they'll come to you when they need something or they'll go to their, you know, they'll refer you to their sister or their friend. So you'll start getting more business in your, in your store. So some of the things that you can do in order to build you know, a very easy way because you're busy, right? So you're selling clothes, you don't have much time is you can have three or four questions that you ask a customer and you start a log book. It can be a notebook, it just via paper um, where you put the name, you put 
the maybe you put if they're coming from a different town, their phone number, what they buy, how much they spend, and the date that they bought it. And so you start a log to understand more of who your customers are. I'm sure that you're already keeping track of your money, right? So you're keeping track of your sales because you need to do that to understand your profit and loss, right? So why can't you just add a few more questions to understand what your customers um, are looking for, um, what they're buying, when they're buying it, and so that you can better anticipate also your uh, your inventory or the products that you need to get in order to sell, or maybe this helps you make better decisions about what you're buying in the secondhand market to then resell to customers. Does that make sense? Does anyone do anything like that right now? Do you try to understand your customers in a more formal way? How do you do that? We get the numbers from them when we open the course. Okay, but do you know? But do you know about them unless they they contact you? They leave their numbers. They give their numbers, but do you know anything when you look at that name? Do you know anything about your customer? Okay. So if let's say that you have a hundred people come by from you in one week, okay? So if you have a hundred names and a hundred phone numbers and a hundred, you know, purchases, so everyone spent two dollars, for example, do you know anything about what that customer bought, who they are? what they like, and why they might return to you? No, we will tell them that we are going to open maybe the tops or trousers. Then if they want, they came to buy them. Right. So I think this is, you know, it's, it's kind of shifting this mentality about it just being people coming to you, but you also knowing what they like so that you're be better able to anticipate what you need, what you will carry in your store or the products you buy to serve. It's like if you are opening a convenience store like a, or a, a local shop, right? Where you sold drinks and chips and other house household items. If, if everyone in the neighborhood needed toilet paper or tissue, you would provide tissue, but if you weren't providing, let's say flour or Coca-Cola, what, you know, the kids come and you didn't have, maybe they would not come to you because you don't have what they're looking for. So in the same way, you're providing a way that you as a business owner can know more about your customers. So you can say, I know that 25%, so one fourth of my customers our mothers and they're coming in every three months to buy a new jacket, let's say. So you can start expecting some of those behaviors and understanding when you need to have certain products, um, you know, that will appeal to the majority of your customers. Um, and it's also about knowing, it's not just about them coming and buying, it's also about knowing their habits. I'm going to share my screen now with a few questions 
that are really helpful to ask um, a, a customer. Um, hold on. Can you guys see this view? Can you see this screen? So these are some questions that you can ask your customers to try to understand their preferences, their behaviors, um, what are the problems that they're facing. In the example of buying clothes, um, there is some sort of what we call a pain point or a challenge or a problem that customers face. Maybe the problem is I walk into a market and there are 3000 stores, which one do I go to? Or maybe the problem is I walk in and I do not find very high quality goods. Or maybe the problem is I am a large, like I am a plus size woman. So like, and I need bigger sizes, right? But none of the market stores have, carry a lot of big sizes so that I'm able to find clothes that I want um, and, and it's a struggle for me to do so. Or on the other side, maybe I am very small and I need to find something. So, you know, it's it's not just about, you know, buying your, your secondhand products and then selling them, but being smart and strategic about what you're buying so that you're able to increase your sales, which then increase your, your profit which you're then reinvesting into buying more products to attract more customers. And then you'll start seeing that grow slowly and slowly. So the customer, the value of what we call customer discovery or understanding your customer very simply is being able to gain insights about their behavior so that you're able to respond and make them feel like your solution, whether that be you are selling a product, you know, food, or you're providing a service, like maybe you're, you're cooking for people um, so that they feel like their, their problem is being solved or their challenge is being met with a solution. So that's the value of customer discovery. So these questions, um, let's say uh, with the shop, you can ask, because, you know, sometimes when people are buying clothes, they ask you questions. It can be very relational. Um, is that the case in, in Zambia? Do people talk to you when they're buying your product? Yeah. Yeah, so it's very relational, right? So you get to know, maybe you get to know why they're buying your product, what they had to eat that day, you know, where they're going next, all of the, all of the fun things that come with being a salesperson and, and also trying to build some sense of, uh, some sense of connection with your customer. So why not ask a few questions? So ask them, tell me about a time when you could not find a product. Um, how did you go about, or what has been your experience with shopping with me? Or what has been your experience shopping for, um, for shoes, uh, you know, that are, so one of the problems that I had when I was living in the Middle East is that I could not find shoes big enough. So I don't know if it's just Americans, but we have bigger feet. So every time I would go into a store, they would have, I think in, in UK size is a size 40 maximum, but I'm a size 41. And so I couldn't find any shoes. And I, I had to search online. I had to go from store to store to store to store. No one could solve my problem. So if someone had taken the time to ask me about my experience, maybe they would have understood that they had a customer if they could provide a shoe that was a size 41. So, you know, it's, it's about understanding people's experience with shopping overall. Um, maybe one of the challenges is 
they're not able or they don't feel safe to have a space where they can try something on over their clothes, like a jacket, right? So maybe you want to put a mirror inside and like a hanger um, or some sort of, uh, you know, that where they would feel comfortable trying on a jacket over their clothes. Um, so these are some questions that you can start with. Like, so how did you react when you found that perfect jacket for you? Um, how often do you buy, ja you know, jackets? Um, when was the last time you purchased a new pair of jeans or, so you could, these are just starting points, but these are good ways for you to come up with a set of questions that you can ask every single customer. This is my challenge to you all is to figure out four questions that you can ask your customers to start getting insight into what they're doing. So why they're coming to you, what are their pain points uh, or, or what are the challenges they're facing and what are the solutions they're looking for in clothing, right? Or in buying products. Um, and then when they answer, like maybe they ask the question, um, so I'm gonna ask you, um, how do you feel about, uh, how do you feel about coming into a large market and seeing thousands of clothes and deciding which one to buy? So that's a, that's a question that's not a yes or no answer. That's a question that encourages people to give a story, right? So. And, and to give more of an answer than just, uh, you know, uh, oh, did you find what you're looking for? Yes or no, right? Or, hey, how was your experience finding my shop? Was it okay? You know, did you find everything you need? It's things like that that can give people an opportunity to express themselves. And maybe that's the point where you're able to say, oh, maybe I can help you with that. Or maybe they're actually looking for more clothes um, you know, that you can help them with, or that, you know, that you have in stock, but you haven't brought it to the store yet. So you can encourage them to come back. So you're doing business all the time, right? So by getting to know your customers, um, if you hear something from a customer, it's always good to ask follow-up questions. So let's say someone said, okay, I had a really difficult time finding your store. I thought it was in this section. Um, and then you can say, well, I'd love to learn more about your experience. These are questions that you can follow, but what did you mean by, can you explain more about this? I heard you say that you had a difficulty finding my store. Is that correct? Um, why did you make the decision to come back and try to find my store? I'd love to learn more about the reasons you came back to my store. Um, taking a step back, why would you come back and, and purchase from my store? It sounds like you feel frustrated that you couldn't find my store e easily. That must be disappointing, you know, when you're busy and trying to look for the product. So this is also building empathy and creating an emotional connection to the customers that you have um, so that you're able to make them feel valued, right? So this is your value proposition. So the more that you learn about your customers, so the more that you learn that you have 30 women who are coming to buy your clothes every three months, the more that you're going to better understand how you can provide products and the experience of shopping for them, right? So depends depending upon what you're doing, you could be running a home babysitting service where you have mothers from the community bring children into your house. The same thing. Why do they continue to come to you? What experience can you provide? Are you providing fun activities? Are you providing a safe space? There, there are ways that you can phrase questions to understand someone's experience with the problem at hand. So the problem in the case of the clothing is I need a piece of clothing or I, you know, I am looking for a piece of clothing uh, and I now am feeling overwhelmed or I can't find my size or I, I can't afford a specific piece, right? Another thing that you can do as add, adding value is maybe your products with higher quality are 
more expensive, but maybe you can tell them, well, if we don't sell this, we, it will go on discount or you can refer them to other people. So you start being a connector so that you're solving many of their pain points or many of their challenges. So that's my encouragement to you as you're going into your business is don't just write down the name and the phone number and how much you sold, but start writing down some details so that when you see that person's coming back, you can start saying, oh, I remember you talked about your daughter. Did you ever find a dress for her? Or so people feel that connection. Wow, this, this business owner cares about me. I wanna keep coming back to her for business. Um, and so that will set you apart from all of the 3000 other, uh, other vendors at the market. Does anyone have any questions? Sorry, I didn't hear a question if there was one. No, okay. Was this helpful? Is this new to you? So how will you go, what types of questions might you ask your customers? Where they come from, what things they want to buy for them so that they come and buy us. Okay. Maybe how often they buy it, mm. right? And and what budget, you know, it might be interesting to know what budget they have. If they're looking for a very nice dress, maybe you can also understand, you know, how much they're willing to spend on something. Um, and if they have, you know, one of you is selling to not, not just women, but you know, you've got kids clothes and clothes for adults. So, you know, maybe you can make the, you can make it an experience. You can have a family day where you have a small discount, 15, 10, 15%, you know, if you bring your kids and you buy five products, I don't know, but you know, you can start making decisions to increase traffic or, or the number of people coming to your store um, or buying from you so that you're able to, to respond. Anything else? Yeah, this was, this is truly incredible. Um, I know I learned a lot, um, Madison, and for you, Chim, you know, I know we, we heard from maybe we, and we have to, we have to close out today at about 1045. Maybe we just have one more story. If anyone wants to share um, another real quick example, case study that the Madison can just speak truth into. Is anyone not doing fashion? Uh, I think a lot of people do charcoal, maybe another, what Madison's saying, someone that's, that's doing maybe a resale of a commodity good, tomatoes. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so it can be very difficult to distinguish yourself, especially in food. So in this group, we only have people who are doing uh, charcoal. Uh, okay. dry fish, uh, chickens, and uh, second-hand clothes. Okay, so let's take the example of food really fast. So you have dry fish, charcoal. How can mm. you distinguish yourself from others? How, so to, the, to those who are working in charcoal, how do you make sure that you are standing out to others? Hi. 
Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? My name is Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm Peggy Zago. What's uh, so the way she distinguishes herself is by uh, <clears throat> the way she repackages the, the chapel. Uh, so the, what they do is they 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 buy 90 bag, 90 kg bags of charcoal. Okay. Then they re Okay, so she's saying <clears throat> what, uh, what she does is um, when she's repackaging this, that charcoal, she does not put the crumbs, she only puts the actual charcoal. What most people do is to increase their quantities of charcoal, they will put in the crumbs of the charcoal, that, that, those, that stuff that you can't even use. So uh, just to sell more, but what she does is she, she's, in other words, she's just being honest with the customer. She only sells what the customer is able to use by packaging the big charcoal. So she doesn't add those crumbs. That's what distinguishes her from other resellers. That's great. So customers know that they're not going to have to sort through like crumbs in order to use your product, right? So that's a great way of knowing why people will come, keep coming back to you. Maybe, you know, I, I don't know how charcoal is packaged, but, you know, when people touch it, do they, um, is it packaged in plastic so that their hands don't get dirty? Um, yes. Or in a box. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's repackaged into sacks and uh, carrier bags. So the okay. customer doesn't have to get dirty. So the customer can actually, uh, um, Hold the bag and tell whether this is uh, this is actual taco or is this. Okay. Yeah. So I think you talking about the value of what you do and when you're selling is really important too, right? So you're only going to be giving customers the best value um, product. So and I think asking customers what they're looking for or why they keep. I would encourage you to ask people why do you keep coming back to me for, for buying? I'm, you can always start off by saying, I'm trying to understand all of my customers so I can better help um, serve you with my, with my product, right? So I'm trying to help improve your experience buying for me. So I have a few questions for you. Um, you know, why do you buy, like, why do you buy for me over the other vendors? How often do you buy charcoal? Um, what other things, you know, do you look for when you're going to buy charcoal? Um, maybe that's just something, you know, when you're thinking about business expansion, like maybe some people are buying, is there something that people always buy when they buy charcoal? Is it like, you know, they go out and they purchase something similar? Maybe you can start trying to, you know, as you build more profit to add that or have a partnership with someone so that, you can sell two things at once so that you're meeting two needs instead of one, right? So there's ways to be creative, um, but you won't learn that until you ask people questions to understand the value, the, the problem they're having and the solution that you can bring to that problem. We always say understanding the problem is so important. It's not the solution. You can't you can't talk about a solution until you really understand the problem. And maybe a problem is if, I don't know if how heavy charcoal is, I'm just throwing this out there because I've not bought charcoal 
um, here in the United States. It's not something we often buy, except if for a mm -hmm. fireplace or that sort of, sort of thing. But maybe you can provide, um, you know, delivery on a regular basis, or you can um, meet people and sell it out of your home if you live closer to to the customer. So there's many ways that you can understand some of the pain points, whether it's traveling, you know, them traveling too far or them having to carry something back or, um, or the price or them not being able to find something. So I'd encourage you to ask those questions, but I've learned yeah. a lot from you guys. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Um, and I think that's a good place to end on just, um, so much good tips here about differentiation. I think, um, and Shim, this is something I, I think we can start incorporating in our boot camps to say, you know, there's so many ways to bring that, that what we call competitive edge. Um, and I hope that many of the entrepreneurs learned a lot. I know I did. Well, Madison, what we usually do now is just do a, uh, a group picture. Um, and we'd love to get all of our entrepreneurs in. Uh, Jim, I don't know if you can uh, turn the camera. All look so beautiful. Yeah, what a great crew. And, and by the way, I think many of them have been meeting today so they can be part of the boot camp. So I awesome. appreciate everyone taking the time and, and we look forward to seeing you in the boot camp. And, and all that comes with it. So uh, let's get everyone smiling. Ready, everyone? One, two, three. All right, let me take one more. Um, I'll do one more here. Ready? One, two, three. Smile. Uh, good one. Good one, everyone. That's great. Um, Really appreciate it, um, Madison, and, and we look forward to having you back. I know you've got your own startup and group, uh, process going the accelerator, but um, hopefully we'll get you on in the summer and and uh, we'll keep you updated on how all these ladies are doing in the program. And um, away we go, continue to build this program up. So thanks, Tim, and, and our Spark team there. Um, for the ladies, we'll give them one final wave if you want to um, turn the camera. Thank you again. Good luck. Have a great day. We'll see you soon at the boot camp, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.